The dilution gene in budgies is one of the most fascinating and versatile genes. Not only does it create four different mutations, but it also changes the way other mutations look. Take these two budgies for example. Both are recessive pides, yet they look strikingly different. They share the same key traits of the recessive pied mutation, but their appearance is clearly not the same. Why is that? If you're not familiar with the recessive pied mutation, don't worry, I already have a full video on it that you can check out later. But in this video, we're going to focus on the dilution gene itself. We'll explore how a single gene can produce such a wide variety of outcomes and break down each of the mutations it creates. Dilute, clear wing, gray wing, and the stunning full-bodied gray wing, which is also known as full-body color gray wing. By the end of this video, you'll not only be able to tell the difference between each of these mutations, but you'll also understand how and why this powerful gene can give rise to all of them and the endless possibilities it opens up for budget genetics. Let's start with the basics. What does the dilution gene actually do? As the name suggests, it dilutes a budgie's color. For example, look at this green budgie compared to a normal green budgie. The dilution gene reduces the body color intensity by up to 90%. In other words, you're left with just a faint pastel wash, only about 10% of the original color. The wing markings become very faint, sometimes almost invisible. The cheek patches are paler than normal, and the throat spots are extremely light, often completely missing. Even the tail changes, instead of the rich blue or green you'd expect, it can appear very pale, sometimes almost completely white. In this blue series budgie, for example, compare the two side by side. The one on the left has barely any wing markings, no visible throat spots or cheek patches, and her tail is completely white. So to sum it up, the loot budgies have a very faint pastel body color, almost invisible wing markings, pale or missing cheek patches and throat spots, and tails that can be so light they look completely white. Now, dilute is just one outcome of the dilution gene. But what happens when this same gene doesn't reduce the body color as much? That's when we get our next mutation, the gray wing. Unlike the dilute, the gray wing only reduces the body color by about 50%. That means the body looks softer and more pastel compared to a normal budgie, but it's still noticeably brighter than a dilute. The wings are where the name comes from. Instead of deep black markings, gray wings have light gray wing markings. Clear and defined, but never dark. The cheek patches are also lighter, usually a pale violet or bluish shade instead of the strong violet you'd see on a normal budgie. The throat spots are there, but they're diluted too, lighter gray instead of black. And the tail? It usually looks muted, a grayish blue or faded version of the normal tail color. So overall, gray wings look like a softer, washed out version of a normal budgie. Not as faint as the dilute, but definitely not as bright as the clear wing or full body gray wing which we'll get to soon. Now you might be thinking, wait, aren't we supposed to be covering the dilution gene? And that's a really good question. The reason we're moving from one mutation to another is because all of these, the dilute, gray wing, clear wing, and full body gray wing, are different outcomes of the same gene. Don't worry if that feels confusing right now. When we get to the genetics part of this video, it will all click together. For now, I just want to keep things simple and show you how each mutation visibly looks. So stick with me until the end, and you'll understand exactly how one single gene can create all of these amazing variations. So now that we've seen the dilute and the gray wing, let's move on to the clear wing, a mutation that looks almost the opposite of what you'd expect from dilution. Unlike the gray wing, which softens the body color by about half, the clear wing keeps the body color at full strength. In fact, Clear wings often look just as bright and vibrant as a normal budgie in their body feathers. But here's the twist. While the body stays intense, 
the wings are almost completely washed out. The markings are very faint, sometimes barely visible at all, and that's exactly why it's called clear wing. The cheek patches are normal and strong, the throat spots are usually reduced or even missing, and the tail feathers are full in color, just like a normal budgie. So overall, clear wings look like they combine the best of both worlds, a full colored, vibrant body paired with wings that look ghostly pale. Now clear wings can easily be confused with the lutes, since both have very faint wing markings. The key difference is the body color and the cheek patches. The lutes have a very soft pastel color, only about 10% of normal intensity, and their cheek patches are pale, sometimes washed out. Clear wings, on the other hand, keep their body color at full strength, and their cheek patches are strong and vivid like a normal budgie. So, if you see ghostly wings but a bright, bold body and vivid cheek patches, you're looking at a clear wing. If the wings are ghostly and the body is pastel with washed cheek patches, that's a dilute. So we've seen how the grey wing softens the body color by about half, and how the clear wing keeps the body bright but fades the wings. But what happens when you combine the best of both? The soft grey wings of a grey wing, and the bright full body color of a clear wing. That's when we get the full body grey wing, also known as the full body color grey wing. It's a mutation that blends those two traits into one stunning variety. Now let's take a closer look at the full body grey wing. As the name suggests, this mutation combines the best of both worlds. The soft grey wing markings of a grey wing and the strong vibrant body color of a clear wing. The body color is full and intense, just like a normal budgie. No pastel wash like the grey wing. At the same time, the wings carry those characteristic light grey markings, never black, just soft and subtle. The cheek patches are slightly paler than normal, but because the body color is so bright, the contrast makes them look stronger. They sit somewhere between what you'd see on a grey wing and a clear wing. The throat spots are also diluted to a soft grey, but they're still more visible than in a dilute. And the tail? It keeps its rich, full color much closer to a clear wing than a grey wing. So overall, the full body grey wing looks like a perfect balance. A bird with a bright, bold body color of a clear wing, but with the gentle grey wings of a grey wing. That's what makes this variety so striking and easy to recognize once you know what to look for. So to quickly recap, the lutes wash everything down to the faintest pastel. Grey wings soften the body by half with clear grey wing markings. Clear wings keep the body bright and bold but leave the wings markings almost invisible. And the full body color grey wing combines the best of both the grey wings of a grey wing and the vibrant body color of a clear wing. Now you might still be wondering, how can one single gene create four such different mutations? That's where the real magic begins. In the next part, we're going to dive into the genetics behind the dilution gene and once you see how it works, everything we've just covered will make perfect sense. Let's start simple. The dilution gene is a recessive gene. That means we write the recessive form as dil with a small d. The dominant form, which is the normal type, is written as dil with a capital D. So in order to actually see a dilute budgie, the bird needs two copies of the recessive form, one dil from the mother and one dil from the father. If it only has one copy, the dominant capital dil takes over and the bird looks normal. Now here's a Punnett square of two budgies that look normal but are both carrying the dilution gene. If we look at the square, you'll notice something really interesting. 25% of the chicks will actually be dilute budgies, because they inherit two copies of the recessive dil. 50% of the chicks will look normal, but they'll still be carrying the dil gene. That means they can pass it on to their offspring and the last 25% will be completely normal, no dilution gene at all. So even if two parents don't look like they have the mutation, if they are carriers, 
there's always a chance of producing dilute chicks. And now we get to the really interesting part. The dilution gene doesn't just have one recessive allele. In fact, there are multiple alleles competing for that same spot on the DNA. Beside the basic recessive DIL, there are two special versions. DIL CW, the clear wing allele, and DIL GW, the gray wing allele. I'll just call them CW and GW for convenience. Here's where it gets fascinating. These alleles are co-dominant with each other, but they're dominant over the basic recessive DIL. At the same time, they are still recessive to the normal dominant DIL allele. So you can imagine it like a race. If the dominant DIL grabs the spot first, it doesn't matter what the other allele is, the budgie will look normal. But if DIL isn't there, that's when the race between DIL, CW, and GW decides what the budgie will look like. In order to visualize it, imagine the DNA strand like a track with a specific spot. Usually, only one pair of alleles can occupy that locus. But in this case, there are four different alleles competing for the same position, DIL, CW, GW, and DIL. And that's exactly how we get all the amazing possibilities, the loot, gray wing, clear wing, and even the full body gray wing. To make it easier to understand, Think of CW and GW as dominant whenever the normal dominant DIL allele isn't present. So here's how it works. If a budgie has CW, CW, or CW DIL, it will be clear wing, since CW is dominant over the recessive DIL. If it has GW, GW, or GW DIL, it will be gray wing, because gray wing as well is dominant over the recessive form. And of course, if it has dil dil, both recessive, that's when you get a dilute, as we have seen before. So even though they are all part of the same dilution gene, the specific allele combinations are what decides whether the bird turns out clear wing, gray wing, or dilute. Okay, now, since we said clear wing and gray wing are both dominant when the normal dil isn't present, what happens if they both win the race? That's why we call them co-dominant. Instead of one blocking the other, neither one fully takes over. They actually work together, and the result is the full body gray wing. So when a budgie has one clear wing allele and one gray wing allele, you get the best of both. The bright full body color of a clear wing combined with the soft gray wings of a gray wing. That's how the full body gray wing is formed a perfect example of two alleles sharing the stage. Let's take a look at a Punnett square to understand this better. If we cross a parent that looks normal but carries the gray wing allele with a parent that is clear wing clear wing, here's what happens. 50% of the chicks will look normal, but they'll secretly be carrying clear wing. They won't show it visually, but they can pass it on. The other 50% will be full body gray wings because they inherit one clear wing allele and one gray wing allele. So from this pairing, you only ever get two outcomes, normal looking carriers and full body gray wings. Now let's look at another Punnett square. This time one parent is a full body gray wing, which we know has the genetics GWCW. The other parent is a gray wing with the genetics GW with the recessive DIL. From this cross, the Punnett square gives us three possible outcomes. 50% will be gray wing, 25% will be full body gray wing, and at last 25% will be clear wing. So with this pairing, you can see how a single mix of alleles can produce multiple different mutations in the same clutch. By the way, if you're not too familiar with Punnett squares or with terms like dominant, recessive or codominant genes, don't worry, I already have a separate video that explains all of that in details. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out after this one. So to sum everything up, the dilution gene is one of the most fascinating in budgies. With just a single gene, we get four different visible outcomes, the soft pastel dilute the half-strength gray wing, the bright-bodied clear wing, 
and the stunning full body grey wing which combines traits of both grey wing and clear wing. Behind the scenes it all comes down to how different alleles DIL, GW and CW interact, compete and sometimes even work together. That's why this one gene creates so many amazing variations. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and share it with other budgie lovers. And if you want to keep learning more about budgie genetics, health and care, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Want to support Budgie World and get cute perks? Hit the join button, it means a lot and helps keep the videos flying!